I'm a mechanic engineer and I've been side hustling ever since I started working as an engineer and even already during my engineering studies. But why would you even want to do a side hustle? Let's start with the obvious money. It's nice to have an extra side income and it also gives you some security that in the unfortunate case that you lose your job, you still have something to fall back onto to bridge the gap to your next job. But there's another reason I highly recommend having a side hustle or any kind of side project really and that's having something that you just do for yourself that pushes you to learn new skills and allows you to explore another side of yourself. Now, which kind of side hustle is best for you really depends on your personal goals and circumstances. So I've collected 10 different side hustle ideas that I've either tried myself or that I've seen friends do successfully. Let's dive in. The first idea is tutoring. This is probably the easiest idea to get started. You just need an engineering student in need of help. So this side hustle idea is basically helping engineering students with the courses they struggle with and help them prepare for their exams. It's helpful if you've actually understood the material you're helping them with, so you should probably pick classes that you're quite good at, or even better, classes that you were struggling with yourself, but then manage to understand. Then you can likely both emphasize with your students and explain the material really well. Where can you find clients? There are a few options depending on if you want to do in-person tutoring or online tutoring. For in-person tutoring, you can leave flyers around your closest university. I've seen that a lot at my own university, university and you can use that to get your first clients and then grow further by word of mouth. If you have friends that are still in university you can also ask them if you if they know anyone that could need help with their classes or you could just stand in front of a lecture hall right when the class ends that you want to help them with and wait for students to approach you and if you want to do online tutoring you can post on one of those online gig platforms. I saw that there are even specific platforms just for tutoring and finding a tutor like Preply. The second side idea is career coaching or mentoring. It's similar to tutoring, you also usually work one-on-one -on -one with people, but besides coaching engineering students, you could also coach engineering graduates who are trying to find their first job or even help more seasoned engineers if you're further along in your career yourself. A big advantage to this is that the engineers who are already working might have more money to spare than engineering students. Now you could either offer individual coaching sessions or you could offer coaching packages of maybe 6 or 12 sessions. This way you don't have to pitch clients for every single session and you can also achieve bigger results if you have more time with the clients. I have tried career coaching myself but it hasn't worked well for me so far and I think it's for three main reasons. First of all, I was not specific enough in my offer and tried coaching both students and engineers. I targeted people who don't have that much expendable income, so students and fresh graduates, and I didn't have anything that really made me stand out in terms of credentials or my specific perspective. But I do know people who are successfully doing career coaching, and from what I've seen, the factors that make them successful are that they have the credentials to show for, so maybe they went to a prestigious school or landed a prestigious job, or or they're a seasoned engineer with lots of experience to pass on. Then they are targeting people who have some money to spare, like working engineers, and they've defined exactly who they're helping and what they're helping them achieve, whether that's create a killer CV for their dream job or help them go from engineer to engineering manager. The third side hustle idea is working as a part-time lecturer. Some universities and schools hire part-time lecturers to teach their students certain classes or workshops. So if you enjoy teaching and explaining the material and want something a bit more formal and structured than tutoring, then this could be a great option. How do you get started? First think about what kind of topics you could teach and then search for part-time lecturer and the name of your area or a university in your area and also experiment with throwing in different topics you could teach and see if you find any interesting job postings and apply to them. You could even reach out to universities and schools that don't have any positions posted and ask them if they could use your help and this way create your own position. And find Finally, you can also search for online lecturer positions either from online universities or from companies that need to teach their employees specific skills. But those are often more advanced and specialized skills than if you were teaching at a university, like teaching them a specific software or method. So that's only an option if you have a specialized skill like that or are willing to teach yourself one to then teach it to others. If this is something you want to try, I would just search around for what kind of lecturers companies and institutions are looking for 
for and see if there's a match with something you're either already good at or something you would like to learn anyway and are willing to teach yourself in order to become a lecturer. A downside of this is that you need to find an available position and a university or company that's willing to hire you for that position. But once you do have that position, you could have a gig for a longer period of time, a few months or maybe even a year. The fourth side hustle idea is doing freelance mechanical design or computer-aided design, short CAD. As a mechanical designer, you're making 2D or 3D technical drawings for people or companies that need it, either because they want to use that drawing as a digital prototype or because they want to get that product manufactured and need to provide technical drawings to the factory. There is a financial investment needed for this because you need a good laptop to run CAD software and you need to either pay for a CAD software license or get your customer to provide you with one. So you definitely need to account for that in the prices you charge to make it profitable. But other than that, you're just using your time and the skills you've already learned as a mechanical engineer. You can find these kinds of gigs on platforms like Fiverr and Upwork, which makes it easy to get started. But a downside is that you actually don't need an engineering degree to do CAD work. So the prices people pay can sometimes be a bit low because you're competing with people who don't have engineering degrees. However, you can overcome this problem with the next side hustle idea. And that is number five, mechanical engineering consulting. These are bigger projects where people or companies don't only need to translate their ideas into a technical drawing, but they actually need you to engineer and design the whole thing. It's often small companies who only design new products every once in a while and therefore don't need full-time engineers. I've actually gotten offers to do this kind of work myself where people just somehow found my YouTube channel and then emailed me asking if I could design something for them. The reason I said no so far is that those were very time intensive projects and I already had enough going on with my job and this YouTube channel. But if you have more time available, it's a great option. But how can you get that kind of work without a YouTube channel? It definitely helps if you put yourself out there somehow and let people know that you're open for this kind of work. So I would definitely add to my LinkedIn profile that I'm open for mechanic engineering consulting work. And I would set up profiles on pages like Fiverr and Upwork to get started. I would probably also create a simple website where you write a few points about what you offer and the value you provide to your clients, as well as showcase some of your past work once you have that to give yourself more credibility. And then you can link that website on your LinkedIn, Fiverr, Upwork, and so on. You could also use it to reach out to companies in your area or in your industry and ask them if they have any work for you. Just send an email, send a short pitch of what you can help them do, and include a link to your website. And if you don't know any companies, you could also start out with the previous side hustle idea. So do some basic CAD design work first, and then pitch to your clients that you could also take over more of the engineering and design process to transition to this kind of side hustle. Just be aware that not all clients will need a full engineering project. So you'll have to be a bit smart about picking the clients that might have a bigger project for you in the future. Side hustle idea number six is a bit similar to the previous one, but it's still different. And that is manufacturing consulting. In this role, you basically help companies bring their product idea to manufacturing with a focus on manufacturing. This is a great option if you have some experience working in manufacturing or design for manufacturing. Depending on your experience, you can help companies with the design. So help them design products that can be manufactured, first of all, and that they can manufacture easier, cheaper, or faster. And you could also help them find suppliers, talk to suppliers, and do test production runs, and just cover all the technical aspects of getting a product manufactured. I have a friend who does this successfully for small startups who can't afford to hire someone full-time for this. But you could also pitch yourself to companies who are not so deep in the manufacturing industry and might not even know that they can get this kind of support. For example, you could approach small makeup brands, fitness brands, food brands, stationery brands. Large companies probably have full-time experts in this field, but small or new companies might not have anyone and be happy to have you cover it for them. It's something I'd actually love to do in the future. So if you try this out, I'd love to hear how it goes. Side hustle idea number seven is something I've done myself as an engineering student, and that's working as a sales rep for mechanical parts. Companies that sell mechanical parts are often quite small companies who are always looking for new customers and they need people who know something about their products to sell them well. So as a sales rep, I was cold calling companies and asked them what kind of parts they usually order and if they would like to order from us the next time they need those kind of parts. I was getting paid by the hour, but there are also setups where you get paid based on the sales that you make and you learn sales skills and people skills. And if you're scared of calling strangers, 
fears like I was, then this is a great way to challenge your fears. You could even do this for other kinds of companies that might need someone with a technical background to do their selling. It works best with smaller companies because bigger companies probably just want to hire someone full time for their sales. To get this kind of job, you can search for part time sales positions or even student sales positions, or you could just reach out to your local mechanical parts manufacturer and see if they could use your help. Side hustle idea number eight is something on the more investment heavy side and that's 3D printing. Basically you buy your own 3D printer and then print parts to order when people send you their drawings. You could also design your own special products that you sell to people or offer to do custom designs for your customers. So then you charge them both for the design and the printing. Finally you could also just sell your designs as digital files so that people can print them themselves. Except for the last option you will need to buy your own printer like I said which is quite the investment and you will also constantly need to buy new 3D printer ink and then you also need to take care of shipping the parts to your customers unless you only sell to local customers which is another option as well. If you anyway want to buy a 3D printer and experiment with it which I personally would love to do in the future then this is a great option for making some money with it and challenging yourself with new designs that your customers request. But if you don't want to own a 3D printer then probably pass on this one. Duh. Side hustle idea number nine is something that I've been doing ever since I started working as an engineer and that's running a YouTube channel. As an engineer you can make videos explaining engineering principles or vlog your life as an engineer or give career advice or show how you create stuff yourself maybe even <laughs> with your 3D printer. The great part of making YouTube videos is that you learn a ton of new skills like video production, writing, filming and editing videos and even online marketing skills. On top of that you can deepen your skills in the topics that you make videos about and it can motivate you to learn new things. For example, I've been reading way more books and taken way more online courses ever since I started my YouTube channel because I can then make videos about them which is a great motivator not only to start but also finish them. Now I'll be honest this is an awful side hustle idea if you just want to make quick money because it takes so much time to make videos, it can take years to make any decent amount of money and there's no guarantee that you will ever make money with it. The way that you would make money with a YouTube channel is either from AdSense, so the ads that Google runs you for after your videos, but that's only available once your channel is monetized. And you can also make money from affiliate links where you link to products people can buy and then make a small cut every time they purchase something. And if you become a somewhat bigger channel, you could also take sponsorship deals. Another way you can make money is from selling your own digital products like templates, eBooks or courses, or from combining a YouTube channel with another of the side hustle ideas and using your channel to bring traffic to that business. In fact, that's in my opinion the healthiest and most profitable way to use a YouTube channel as a side hustle. Not as a means to making money by itself, but as a marketing channel for another business. Whether that's a tutoring or coaching business, a mechanical design business, manufacturing consulting business, or 3D printing business. You just need to make sure that you make videos that actually attract the right potential customers that likely also need the products or services that you sell. And number 10, the final final side hustle idea is something that I already briefly mentioned and that's creating online courses. It's something I definitely want to experiment with in the future because it's fun, it uses tons of skills I already have from running a YouTube channel like writing, filming and editing and it can make you a lot of money if you do it right. You can do this on a course platform like Skillshare or Udemy where the advantage is that they drive traffic to your courses because your courses can be found when people search for the topic that you made a course on. But you will not make that much money per person person that takes your course. Another option is to host your course on a platform like Kajabi or Gumroad, so basically host it yourself, which means that you can make more money because you can decide the price yourself and the platform either takes a smaller cut or just takes a fixed fee. But those platforms don't have a discovery function, so it only makes sense if you already have an existing audience. So for example, if you have an audience on YouTube, LinkedIn or Twitter that you can sell that course to. If you don't have an existing audience, I would go with a course platform platform like Skillshare or Udemy. But before you get started on creating your course, a word of warning, it's a lot of effort to create a course and it's very easy to create a course that nobody wants to buy. So follow the same guidelines as with every business you start. Research the market, find out what kind of courses are popular and identify potential gaps in the market where there's a lot of interest but not a lot of courses or at least not any great courses out there. If you're now thinking these ideas are great but I don't know anything about how to start a business, I got you covered. <laughs> because I collected the five best business books for engineers to learn basically
basic business knowledge as quickly as possible, which I share in this video right here. 